All right, so we saw for these reactions, which is huge. And now we have to draw the shear and moment diagrams as we near the end of this ex epic example problem here. I've got, again, my structures drawn out with my reaction solve, the reactions that I solve for drawn in. And now I just gonna, I'm gonna use the equilibrium equations and get AY, AX, and MA. So from some of the forces in the horizontal, I know AX is zero, done. I'm gonna sum forces in the vertical. And I get AY is 8.36 kilonewtons, also pointing upwards. And to get the moment reaction here, I'm gonna take moments about B because that, that my resultant of this distributed load is right at the middle, so I don't I can ignore it. <laughs> and and BY. So here, some moments about B equal to zero plus MA equal to zero. And that just tells me MA is equal to 3.87 kilonewton meters going in this direction. So here are my reactions, and now I'm gonna draw my free body diagram one last time so I can draw my shear and moment diagrams in a nice clean way. And so now, here's my free body diagram. I'm gonna go ahead and start the process. Vertical lines at discontinuities. Yes, my shear diagram first, going left to right. Remembering that dv dx is equal to the value of the distributed load. And so I here I start, I go up 8.36 kilonewtons. I have a constant distributed load between these two discontinuities. So I know my shear diagram here will be linear. It's pushing down, so I'm decreasing. This area right here is six times three, which is negative, or it'll be 18 kilonewtons. I'm at 18 kilonewtons. That's the area. I'm gonna decrease 18 kilonewtons to negative 9.64. This is negative 9.64 kilonewtons. Then I jump up 20.57, which will take me to 10.93 kilonewtons. Well, here, this is constant. So again, I'm decreasing linearly. And this area here is also 18 kilonewtons. So I'm gonna decrease 18 down to negative 7.07 .07. done and that is my shear diagram it's going to be important for me to know where my zeros happen in order to, for me to find the maxes of my my moment diagram here this distance right here i have this 8.36 kilonewtons i divide it by six kilonewtons per meter or i'm decreasing at a rate of six kilonewtons per meter and that will tell me that this distance is 1.393 meters and here this distance is 1.607 meters. And the same thing here. Again, I start at 10.93. If I decrease at a rate of six kilonewtons per meter, how far do I have to go to reach this zero? And that distance in this case is 1.822 meters. And this is 1.178 meters. All right, and with that, now I can go ahead and draw my moment diagram. And here I'm gonna start at negative 3.87 because I have a concentrated moment on the left side and it's generally pointing down. So boom, negative 3.87 kilonewton meters. This is linear, so I expect my moment diagram to be parabolic. I have a zero location here, so I'm expecting a peak at these locations right here. Boom. And now I gotta calculate some areas and this area right here, which is the area of a triangle, one half base of 1.393 meters times a height of 8.36. This is 5.823 kilonewton meters. And that means I'm gonna start from here and increase 5.823 which will take me to 1.953, boom. So this is 1.953 kilonewton meters, and I would, my graph looks something like that. All right, hey, that's pretty good. And then I decrease here, this area, again, one half base times the height times negative. And this area right here is negative 7.746 kilonewton meters. And again, I'm decreasing, I, this time because I'm my area is negative, I'm gonna go down negative 7.746, or that's my change. And that should take me to negative 5.793 kilonewton meters. And my graph will look 
All right, I can live with that. Boom, parabolic. All right, and then here, I again, I'm repeating the same process, calculating this area, which is 1 half 10.93 times 1.822. And this area is positive 9.957 kilonewton meters. So that means I'm going back up 9.957. And that's going to take me to 4.164 kilonewton meters. Boom. Yes, parabolic again. And this area here, if I did everything right, if I calculate the area of one half base times height, I should end up with 4.164. So one half, 1.178 times 7.07. .07. This is 4.164 kilonewton meters. Yes, and that takes me back to zero. Yeah, something like that. And there, finally, of this epic example. Shoot, if you've been watching all of these parts or the entire length of this video, you deserve a freaking medal. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully it's useful to you. Gives you a big picture view of everything that you're learning. And, you know, let me know if you have any questions or comments below. See ya. Structure free!